the previous tutorial derived this red boxed equation as the general expression for relating the thickness, the angle, and the wave length or wave vector of light propagating in a slab waveguide. And we established that the total phase in X from going from one edge of the slab to the other is going to be an integer number of pi plus some additional phase due to total internal reflection. As a final cap off to this discussion of waveguides, let's make this expression something you can really plug into and I'll show you a MATLAB simulation of how many modes actually then exist in the waveguide. So let's clear up a lot of what we've got here so we've got some space. So these are the things that mattered. The equation, the quantization of the different numbers of pi that are allowed, and what the formula for the phase shift is. So let's just drag those things up out of the way. So to write this expression in the most direct way with variables that we would directly plug into it most intuitively, let's first of all rewrite k. So the wave number k is equal to 2 pi over the wavelength of light in the waveguide, and that means it's equal to 2 pi over the air wavelength of the light, which is what we're usually going to talk about, is the light wavelength once it exits the waveguide and is propagating in our optical system. So that's lambda in air, lambda naught, divided by n1. And that, of course, can be algebraically rewritten as 2 pi n1 over lambda naught. So now we will rewrite this expression. We're all prepared to do that. I've, by the way, updated this expression here. I had a typo before where I hadn't written arctangent around this expression. And so now let's get that expression at the bottom. Let's isolate the m pi by itself. We'll write that at the end because then if I bring the two psi term over here, all of the theta dependence will be on the left-hand side of the equation, and the right-hand side will just be a constant. So left-hand side, k cos theta 1d, we can now, using this, rewrite it as 2 pi n1. I'll take the d and ratio it to the lambda naught, since those are both lengths, the thickness of the cavity and the wavelength of the light in air, and then cosine theta 1. And now I'm going to have negative 2 psi. Psi is given by this expression here. So minus 2 arctangent. And then this expression. And all of that equals m pi. So this is really the expression as a practical matter that you can plug into to figure out the relationship between parameters for a slab waveguide. You've got the thickness, the air wavelength, the refractive index, and the angle of the light. So all of the properties of that light. You've also got the refractive index dictating the critical angle, and you've got, again, the angle of incidence theta 1. All of these terms are on the left-hand side, and this can be thought of as some function of refractive in of the index contrast n1 and n2 and the thickness d and the wavelength of the light in air and the angle at which the light is coming in theta 1 so you get this huge function and it's just equal to an integer number of pi and any time that you've got these variables exactly equaling m pi that determines a combination of parameters of that defines a waveguide mode. So let me run now a MATLAB simulation just to give you some examples. If I choose the following parameters, I've got my refractive index 1 is 1.5, my refractive index 2 in the cladding, the forbidden zones, is 1.45, and that'll be true for both sides of the slab. And I choose a thickness ratio, d over lambda, of 5. Then I can explore this space. I can run this simulation. 
and I can say for various different incident angles, given all of these conditions, given that I've set the wavelength uh, thickness ratio and I've set the refractive indices, which incident angles give me an integer value of pi. I've drawn dashed lines here at 0, 1, 2, and 3 pi. This is the function f divided by pi. I'm starting from about the, from the critical angle with, with this refractive index ratio, the critical angle is a little less than 76 degrees. And these are the intersection points, 3, 2, 1, and 0 pi. So this waveguide supports four modes at these four different angles of propagation. If I increase the critical angle, for instance, by making this 1.49, I get a different calculation where I've only got two guided modes in the waveguide. And if I make it even closer, 1.499, and run that, now I only get one guided mode. It's possible to create conditions by having very, very close refractive indices to have only one possible guided mode in the waveguide. Another way to reduce the number of modes is to set the refractive index back to 1.45 in the outer regions, but to change my thickness ratio from 5 down to, say, 1, make it a thinner waveguide. Now when I run the simulation, I again only get a single mode propagating. Now it's not because the refractive indices are close to each other. I've still got a critical angle about 75 degrees, but my waveguide is thinner, and that's another way of ensuring that only one mode propagates.